Welcome to 21st Sports 2015 Season Preview for the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to go over the roster and the regular season schedule and make predictions for every single game in the regular season. Well, let's get started with the roster. And at quarterback, you had Joe Flacco. And Flacco had a pretty good year last year, throwing for 3,986 yards. He had 27 touchdowns and just 12 interceptions. But I believe this year he's going to struggle as they brought in Tressman as their coordinator. And Tressman just loves to throw, 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 throw the ball. And they actually, I mean, they threw the ball quite a bit last year as well. So, I mean, it's just going to be somewhat more the same, but they're going to throw it even more. Whereas they really need to be running the ball more. And, I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, you're going to see a shift. Like, they had actually brought some balance to their attack last year. You know, they passed more than they ran, but they ran more than they had in the past as they had been asking Flacco to do too much. And then finally, you know, you got four set carrying some weight. I mean, Ray Rice has some good years in the past too, but this year with Trustman, they're going to just be asking Flacco to do everything when he really doesn't need to, but that's just Trustman's philosophy is to pass the ball 70% of the time. And so you're going to see Flacco's interceptions go up, his touchdowns go down, and you're going to see lots of turnovers in a season filled with turmoil. I don't know why they brought in Trustman. I mean, you seen what he did with Cutler last year. And it's, that's what's going to happen to Flacco this year. But he got Forsett in the backfield. He had a huge year last year, Forsett did. He averaged 5.4 yards per carry. He had 1,266 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. And you would think, well, you got a guy like that, you're going to give him the ball. But not in a Trustman offense. He had Matt Forte, but instead of running the ball, he had him passing the ball to Forte, who had 102 receptions. So they're just going to start throwing the ball to Forsett. They're like, yeah, we don't run the ball in a Trestman offense. We like to pass the ball. And we like to pass it to running backs. We don't even hand it to them. We throw it to them. Yeah, I mean, they got talent, though. It's a talented team. It just sucks that they got such a horrible offensive coordinator who was a bad head coach. I mean, he's a good quarterback coach. But anyway, we give the guy too much res You let the guy call his plays and freaking see what happens. But, um, you know, receiver, you got Steve Smith. He's going to retire after the year, so you'd expect him to have a big year. But I'll tell you what, the way this year is going to go, he's going to want to retire, like, midway through the year. He had 1,000 yards last year, 1,065 receiving yards and six touchdowns. And, you know, um, they also got Kamir Aiken, Kamar Aiken. They drafted Brashad Perriman out of UCF, and so Perriman is a pretty good receiver. And then, you know, at tight end, you got Gilmore. His, uh, Owen Daniels isn't there anymore. He went over to Denver. But Gilmore's all right. And, of course, fullback Kyle is just a, he's a pretty good fullback. So they got some talent, but, you know, Smith also, he's getting old. That's why he's retiring at the end of the year. And, I mean, he could have a good year, but I said with Trestman doing the play calling, I just do not see things going well. Of course, uh, you know, they also they got Lorenzo Taliaferro. In the backfield as well with four set. I like Tyler Ferro, but they're not really going to run the ball. They're just going to pass it. Pass, 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 pass. And that's a recipe for disaster. It's going to suck, too, because the Ravens got an awesome defense. But they're going to be up in their turnovers because they're going to do nothing but pass the ball. But uh, let's look at their defense, which is the strength of their team. And up front, you got Tim Jernigan. You also got Chris Canty on the other end and in the middle. Brandon Williams, of course, Satoli Nada is gone. Now, that's a big hole up front to fill. And then on the outside linebacker, you got Terrell Suggs. Terrell Suggs is awesome. He is an excellent linebacker. He's a strength in the core and the leader on their defense. And over on the other side, you got Elvis Dummerville. That's got Courtney Upshaw. And in the middle, C.J. Mosley and Daryl Smith. It is a really, really talented linebacking core. It's almost like an embarrassment of riches how deep they are at linebacker. Of course, the Ravens have always been a team with solid linebacking play. And then in the secondary, the corners, you got Ladarius Webb, and Jimmy Smith, and then safety. You got strong safety, Will Hill, the third, and then free safety, Kendrick Lewis. So they got a good defense, 
you know, they're pretty solid. Of course, they're not going to be as strong against the run this year, you know, with the, you know, missing Hatoli Nada. But they got a good defense regardless. It's just really the thing that uh, has me questioning how well they're going to do is Tressman as their coordinator. I really do not like that, and that's why I have them losing a lot of games this year. I know a lot of people think the Ravens are going to have a big year and be very successful, but I think that you know when they switch their philosophy from what was working with the balance to tag, and then they start shifting the balance to just becoming a pass-happy team, then they're going to start turning the ball over, and they're going to start losing games. And it'll start off in Week 1 in Denver, September 13th, against the Broncos. Then Week 2, September 20th, they're going to Oakland to face the Raiders. I think the Raiders are a lot better team than people give them credit for, and I think the Raiders win this game. So in Week 3, they're going to be hosting the Bengals, their division rivals, and I believe the Bengals win this division. I believe they win this game. That's September 27th. Then Week 4, October 1st, they're going to be on Thursday Night Football in Pittsburgh against the Steelers at 825 kickoff, and I believe Pittsburgh wins this game. Then Week 5, October 11th, they have plenty of time to prepare, 10 days to get ready, and against the Browns in Baltimore, I believe that they will beat Cleveland. So then Week 6, October 18th, they're going to San Francisco to face the Niners. And they could win this game, but I got the Niners winning this one. But, I mean, Baltimore really should win this game, and they very well likely may. But then Week 7, October 26, Monday Night Football, 8.30 kickoff. They're going to be in Arizona against the Cardinals. This is their second straight week in a row against an NFC West opponent on the road. And I think they're going to lose this game against the Cardinals. The Cardinals got a tough D, and they could put up some points. And so then week 8, November 1st, 1 o'clock kickoff on a Sunday. They're going to be hosting the Chargers, and I believe the Chargers win this one. So then um, by week, week 9, and then week 10, they host the Jags, and I believe that they will beat Jacksonville in Baltimore. So in, which actually, I think Jacksonville's a lot better than people give credit for. But week 11, November 22nd, it's a Sunday game, 1 o'clock. They're going to be in Baltimore hosting the Rams. And in this game, I think the Rams get them. They got a really tough D. Of course, Baltimore could win this game. It's possible. So week 12, November 30th, Monday Night Football. They're gonna. It's interesting that this is a Monday Night Football game, but they're gonna be going to Cleveland against the Browns. It's a division rivalry game, and I actually have the Browns winning this one in Cleveland. Although I wouldn't be shocked to see the Ravens win. Of course, it's interesting about this putting this on Monday Night Football is because uh, the Ravens used to be the Browns before they moved to Baltimore. Of course, the Colts used to be in Baltimore before they moved to Indianapolis. So then they just moved the Browns to Baltimore, and then they just started the Browns back up, and now the Browns are the Browns again, but the Ravens are the Browns because they've got their history. But uh, So anyway, week 13, December 6th, they're going to be going to Miami, and I believe the Dolphins win this one. The Dolphins are going to be one of the toughest teams in the AFC. And then week 14, December 13th, they're back in prime time. And this is uh, their fourth primetime game of the season. And this one against Seattle. Of course, it's in Baltimore, though, against the Seahawks. And this is a rough stretch right here at home. It's It works out that in their favor that at least they're at home for these three games. But against some really tough opponents. And first, the Seahawks, I believe, will beat them. And then week 15, December 20th, they host the Chiefs. And I believe the Chiefs win that one. That's a 1 o'clock game. And then they're back on Sunday night, their fifth game of the year in prime time. So everyone's going to get to see them lose. And Tressman will be gone after this year, after the embarrassments in prime time. In week 16, they'll be hosting the Steelers. And in week 16 against the Steelers, they lose that one too. And in week 17, their final game of the season, they end it in Cincinnati against their division rivals, the Bengals. And, I mean, I know a lot of people would probably think this one, and even these last two games could have some big implications towards the playoffs regardless because the Steelers and the Bengals will be in the mix of things. And, hey, you know, maybe uh, if they just have a balanced attack and Tressman doesn't go hog wild with the freaking passing like he did in Chicago last year, 
then Baltimore could win some games and they could be in the mix of things and they could make a run for the title because they got such an awesome defense. But Tressman's just going to screw everything up. Like I said, he's going to make Flacco throw the ball like 40, 50 times a game. And they're just going to run the ball just every once in a blue moon. And they're going to totally just waste, you know, four sets talent. And they're just going to be asking them to come out the backfield on screens and just, oh, yeah, let's just pass the ball all the time. That's all Tristan wants to do. And that's why they're going to be 2-14. and 14. That's what I think anyway. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, whether you agree or disagree. I know a lot of people got them picked as the, the winners in the North. I like the Bengals personally to win this division. Like I said, you know, uh, I trust him. After what he did last year in Chicago, I just am really down on him. And when I found out he was going to Baltimore, I'm like, well, there goes the Ravens season. And I said, it's not like I don't like the Ravens. It's not like I'm just trying to dump on them or anything. I actually have always had a lot of respect for the Ravens, and also I've liked them, and I've cheered them on in the past. You know, I've cheered against them, too, depending on who they're going against, but I've cheered for them a lot, too. And... You know, I, I was actually not happy to see Trestman go there. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. But uh, that's how I see it going. Let me know in the comments section below what do you think. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and have a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.